types of swings and outcomes of ball flight. What's the one piece of advice you give to your amateur playing partners on improvement? Well, I think, uh, I mean, there's a few things in terms of the full swing, I guess. Uh, yeah, we can always work on the setup and some of the shots in the short game, you see bunker shots where the ball played way back with a square right. to a shut face and you feel like you're not going to hit a high <laughs> splashy bunker shot from that setup. So I think just getting the basics as, as clean as they can get, I think is going to help a lot. And at the same time, longer clubs, you see amateurs trying to help the ball up into the air and yeah, there's a few, there's a few little traps <laughs> to fall in. Let's uh, let's put it that way. What are your go-to's, your practice elements that you always find that you're doing over and over again? Well, I got certain drills that've been with me for for a long time. I think syncing up really the the body with with the arms. Um, you know, when you when you get a lit, little out of sync and keep leaving things behind or too quick or whatever. So there's a, there's a few things you can. You can work out in, in, in that sense, and um, otherwise, we I think all the all the players out here they have a few things in putting. You have your mm -hmm. training aids or devices that you kind of do, and the drills that you do. So really, we're looking after looking for consistency, and then you've got to keep on doing the same things over and over and doing it better. Well, congrats on a wonderful season, and good luck here in Dubai. Thank you. Thanks. Tell me, you've played in loads of pro-ams with golfers of all abilities and skills, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of different shots and swings. What's the one piece of advice you could give to amateur golfers to help them play better golf? Um, it's a good question because there's always like the, you know, the, I always believe in the basics. I always believe in letting the loft of the club do the work um, mm. and letting how far the club goes do the work. I would love amateurs to know how far all the clubs go. I would say that's one thing and just play within yourself from there. I think that's so important. And, you know, a lot of the times if you asked the guys how far a hybrid goes, they probably wouldn't know, but <laughs> they'd give it a go of hitting it at numerous distances. Um, and then other than that, I'd say learn to open the face in a bunker. I always go in bunkers <laughs> and I see people struggling with a square face and the <laughs> leading edge always kicks in. I'd love them to know how to open a face in a bunker. So in, in your game right now, in your winning ways, is there any change to your practice routine? Are you going to alter anything in how you practice and prepare? Um, no, just keep doing the same things. Uh, you know, each week you have you find out how to play the golf course, and you look at the pins, and you look at what's required, and and work on that. And this week's no different. Fantastic! Thanks Thank for you. the time. No worries, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Cheers. Amazing advice from Heinrich Stenson and Tommy Fleetwood regarding using loft around the green. Now I'm in a scenario exactly like this, where I'm way below the surface of the green, and I've got to get the ball to go high and come down softly. And the only way to do that is by using loft. Let's first talk about the wedge that you use. I've got a 60 degree, a lob wedge. If you don't have one in your bag, get one. This is an essential tool for playing around modern green speeds and a lot of the elevation we need. We want to talk now about static and dynamic loft. And static means still, just what we look like at address and things that we can do at the address position that are going to add loft. The first thing is the side of the club that we grip, where you place your hands on the golf club. And if you were to just begin with your lead hand, your glove hand position, you're going to make a change by rotating that lead hand more to the side and slightly under of the grip. Why? This is critical now to how you can not close the club through impact, but actually have it more open You'll notice in this position, holding the club out in front of you, very difficult to rotate the club face closed, but really easy to keep the club open. This might be one of the most important static positions you can get into for adding loft. Secondly, is where you position the handle of the golf club. When you move the handle of the club forward, that reduces the loft of the club. Not great for these add loft shots. Actually moving the handle a bit more over top of the grip end, that adds loft to the club. And that does something very important that Tommy Fleetwood was talking about, which is the leading edge of the club. When you move that handle back right over top of the club head, that gets the leading edge up off of the surface that you're trying to hit off of. And that helps the club glide, which is what the splash will be out of the bunker and out of some rough and green side scenarios. So moving on to the bottom of the club, we now know the grip and handle position, but now let's look down that club face. You can actually begin 
rotating the toe open a bit, laying the face of the club back. This is another add loft position. You've now set all of the dials for adding loft. In the setup that you take for your swing now, when you come into your dress position, practice your backswing a few times. And what I want you to see over your shoulder is where the club face points in the takeaway. In this scenario, I've got the face of the club, the toe of the club, rotated open behind me, the toe pointing back over to my right. Now, the opposite, the bad position, I see this a lot in players that struggle out of bunkers, is when the toe of the club is pointed more forward, more away from them out in front, and this is a major D-loft of the club face. Not good in this scenario. You've got to get that loft open so you can get used to this scenario when you're below the surface of the green, hitting up to a high, very fast surface. It looks like this. So let's go over those static positions. Number one, that lead hand grip, so important to get that rotated more to the side and slightly under that you can set the shaft of the club a little bit more neutral where it's not leaning forward but more straight back up and down. Then opening the face a little bit at the address position, you'll have turned all those dials to maximum loft. When you get set up for the swing, roll the toe open to start the back swing. You're adding a bunch of loft and making these greenside scenarios that much easier. Get a 60 degree in your bag if you don't have one and practice this to help you in this shot.